If you're like me and you're someone that's trying to get the most out of your body and mind, not only in the gym and the kitchen, but also in the workplace and at home with your family, then you're going to want to start paying attention to how inflammation affects your brain. And here's the thing, we don't always know when it's affecting our brains. So let's take a deep dive into what triggers brain inflammation, but also the steps that you can take to start taking back control of your body and your mind when it comes to inflammation. You are tuned into the internet's leading performance, nutrition, and fat loss channel with new videos on Tuesdays, Fridays, and Sundays. There's a red subscribe button that I need you to hit, and then I want you to pound that little bell icon so you can turn on notifications and know whenever I go live. Now, I wanna make sure that you check out Mudwater down below. So Mudwater, these guys are really cool. So I met them and they told me about their whole story. Their whole story is about helping people get off of caffeine. Now, I know how much you guys love caffeine, how much you love your coffee, but sometimes you're trying to wean off of it or you just want something you can have in the afternoon. So Mudwater has put together a pretty cool group of compounds that actually can help you get off of caffeine, but more importantly, just give you a substitute. Talking things that are still gonna give you that pick-me-up, but not completely send you over the edge like caffeine would. So I encourage you to check them out. Plus, they're also just doing great things for the community and they're doing great things for the world. Now, let's get into some science. So let's take a look at how this really works and the foods that you can use to start improving your brain function and reduce that brain inflammation. I'm gonna lead right off with some research, okay? And this particular study was performed at the University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign. And what they were looking at was particularly a virus reaction within the body in terms of brain inflammation. So what they did is they took pigs and they injected them with a specific virus and they monitored the reaction within the brain. Well, what they found was that those that were injected with a virus had an increase in what is called microglia. Microglia is an immune cell, so there is an immune response. Well, consequently, there was also an increase in gene expression when it came down to inflammatory reactions. So there was an increase in inflammation in the brain. Well, to add insult to injury, those that experienced the brain inflammation also performed poorly on spatial awareness tests. What does this simply mean? It means flat out that there is a strong correlation between inflammation in the brain and poor cognitive function, period, end of story. Now, there's also been a lot of links with depression and inflammation as well. In fact, a 2006 German study took a look at this and found that those that were prescribed SSRIs, which are typical antidepressants, had much less of a response in their depression than if their SSRIs were combined with an anti-inflammatory like Riboxin. Now, I'm not saying that you go out and you just take pharmaceuticals, not by any means, but the simple science shows that brain inflammation and depression are definitely improved when SSRIs are combined with an anti-inflammatory. So this just goes further and proves the point that brain inflammation is linked to a lot of negative things. So what ultimately causes this brain inflammation though? We have to take a little bit of a deeper dive. Well, the main thing is our diets, okay? High fat, high sugar diets. Now studies have shown that if you combine high fats and high sugars, you will have an increase in brain inflammation. But additionally, we have to look at things like a leaky gut, so poor digestion. We also have to look at simple things like environmental toxins and overall stress. All things that quite honestly can be somewhat out of our control. But how do we fix this? How do we start taking measures to really feel better and tackle that brain inflammation so we can get our minds back? Here are three simple ways that you can make that happen. The first one is turmeric. I talk about it in so many videos, but here's the thing. Turmeric reduces the gene expression that's associated with inflammation, okay? It reduces something known as nuclear factor kappa B, which you're probably becoming a little bit familiar with because I'm talking about it a lot lately. This nuclear factor kappa B regulates inflammation within the body, sort of from the epicenter. So turmeric plays a big role in reducing that, which means that it can help us out with inflammation not only throughout the body, but also in the brain, help turn off the switch that triggers that additional inflammation in the brain. Okay, the next thing that you can do is take DHA or fish oil. Now here's the thing, docosahexaenoic acid, DHA, is only one component of fish oil. If you were to look at typical omega-3s or fish oil, you're gonna see that there's EPA and DHA. And both are really, really efficient at reducing inflammation within the body, but DHA in particular is very effective at working on the brain. In fact, a lot of studies have shown that DHA reduces inflammation in the hippocampus portion of the brain. The hippocampus is the area that we generally look at when we're measuring inflammation or we're measuring any kind of cognitive function. So since DHA has that effect, that's definitely what you wanna be focusing on. So when it comes down to looking for the right kind of fish oil or the right kind of omega-3, you wanna be focusing on that DHA as much as possible simply because it's going to affect inflammation and in those inflammatory cytokines a lot more. Okay, the next one that you wanna get a lot of is green tea. 
Now this is particularly interesting because green tea does something unique. You see, it contains something known as EGCG, that's epigallocatechin 3 gallate. Now what this EGCG does is it crosses the blood-brain barrier. Not many things can cross the blood-brain barrier. So since EGCG is a natural anti-inflammatory and it has the ability to cross through the blood-brain barrier, you're really able to work on brain inflammation at its very best. In fact, there's some research to back that up as well. In fact, in a 2004 study in the Journal of Immunology, they took a look at mice that were injected with something known as autoimmune encephalomyelitis. Now, autoimmune encephalomyelitis is essentially where you have a disease that affects the myelin sheath of the nerve and breaks it down. Well, what they found is that the mice that had EGCG, or green tea in the picture as well, had significantly less neuronal damage and also had significantly less inflammatory cytokine response associated with the illness. Now what that simply tells us is that the brain response from EGCG is extremely powerful. So that's a triple threat combination that you can use, taking turmeric, docosahexaenoic acid, and epigallocatechin 3 gallate. It's a fancy way of saying EGCG or green tea. Combining those throughout the day, if you're someone that's dealing with a lot of cognitive decline or general brain fog, might be the solution that you need to start feeling your best again. As always, keep it locked in here on my channel and make sure if you have any ideas for future videos to comment below so that we can tackle those. I'll see you in the next one.